Hello and welcome to the Instatec Liquid Nitrogen Setup Tutorial. Uh, in today's video, we are going to be looking at the Instatec Liquid Nitrogen System, how it's connected, and the key operational components. Let's get started by introducing the Liquid Nitrogen System components, consisting of a doer along with inlet tubing, the outlet N2 gas tubing, an I.O. cable for communication between the suction pump and the temperature controller, of course, a liquid nitrogen compatible Instec thermal plate, a power cable for both the temperature controller and suction pump, the LN2 suction pump, the sizing of which depends upon your application, and then of course your temperature controller. To introduce our Instec liquid nitrogen system components, we first have the doer. The Instec LN2 doer is an insulated container which connects to the thermal stage. Instec offers doers in three convenient sizes, including 3 liters, 10 liters, and 30 liters, depending on your experimental duration and thermal load. An important first step of the setup is identifying and verifying all system components are present. Begin by removing the suction pump. A notice will be included which informs the user to remove all four mounting screws from the underside of the pump. There is also a sticker with the same message covering the power plug. Turn the pump so the bottom side is accessible and use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the four mounting screws. If these four screws are not removed, the pump will be noisy and not operate properly. You can store these screws to reinstall in order to protect the pump if shipping or relocating is needed. You can connect the inlet hosing to your LN2 compatible Instec plate. Simply match the inlet tube with the stage inlet port and push it so the Teflon tubing cap covers the stage's inlet port. This can change based upon your model and is specified in your user's manual. Next, connect the outlet tubing. A tubing reducer will be provided if needed, like the one shown here. The thermal plate has no preference for which is the inlet and the outlet port, so feel free to use whichever is convenient. Next, connect the stage N2 gas outlet tubing to the suction pump inlet barbed connection. The suction pump pulls gas through the inlet a heater then warms it before outputting exhaust as warm N2 air. Now connect the power cables for both the LN2 pump and temperature controller. The LN2 flow circuit begins at the insulated doer. It's pulled via negative pressure through the inlet tubing, into the sample area, through the outlet tubing, and to the LN2 suction pump. It is then heated and outputted as harmless N2 gas. To prevent ice formation on your sample at low temperatures, you can purge an inert gas or pull a vacuum on any compatible closed chambered Instec stage. Ice formation on the outlet tubing is normal and typically harmless. Adding foam insulation may reduce some condensation, however Instec offers vacuum insulated tubing or LN2 exhaust heating as an optional additional component. The LN2 exhaust heating is simple to use. Simply connect the standard silicone rubber tube to the outlet barb. Connect the power cable to the heater and the power supply. Then connect the exhaust heater inlet to the thermal stage cooling outlet port. This is a simple addition to any existing Instec system that allows you to run long duration experiments without any ice formation. This footage is sped up to 64 times normal speed and you can see that while some ice formation does occur on the inlet tube, no ice forms on the uninsulated LN2 outlet. You can send commands to the LN2 suction pump by using the Instec app software. Simply set your target temperature, in this case negative 190 degrees Celsius. You can press hold for the fastest cooling rates possible, or you can specify a ramp rate and press ramp for a slower, more controlled cooling rate. In this instance, we use the hold command starting at about 2.5 minutes, and we reached our target temperature at the four minute mark, so just a total of one and a half minutes cooling time. You'll then notice the temperature is maintained at the set temperature very closely. The LN2 pump will be given commands by the controller to turn on and off as needed to keep the temperature stable. When your experiment is done, simply press stop or you can activate the heater to warm back up the sample area for quicker experimental cycling times. If your thermal plate is not reaching the minimum temperature required or the cooling rate is not fast enough, shortening the outlet tubing may help. Place your thermal plate and suction pump as close together as your setup allows, measure the shortest amount of tubing to connect the two, and simply cut it using scissors. Reconnect the shorter tubing to your LN2 pump. Reducing the tubing length helps to increase suction and thus to maximize cooling power.